Listen, I am not afraid to admit when I'm wrong, and the past two months I've definitely not been at the top of my game, especially when it comes to invoices. Why? Because, well, literally I have forgotten to send them. Currently, I have four clients on payment plans. None have gotten their invoice on time. Two, I even sent over a week and a half late, which then pushes the pay date back and any payment thereafter, just purely out of respect, right? I'm not going to send an invoice and then five days later, send another one. And I know what you're thinking, Sarah, don't you want to get paid? Obviously. And you're probably also thinking, Sarah, why are you not just auto charging? And that, my friends, is actually a very good question. So in the last six years that I have been freelancing, I've frankly never really had issues with people paying their invoices on time. And it's always been a manual task that I enjoy in my business. And I did actually at one point auto charge each payment, but then I had a few clients who weren't really happy with that setup because they wanted to be able to select a different payment method, etc. And so I ended up taking that away, which in reality has never been a big deal. And I've always sent them on my own since. However, August and September have really become some of my busiest times of the year. And frankly, I just fell off this year. There's really no excuse for it. And so on the other side of that, you know that I've been building my AI powered account executive, Lizzie. She mainly handles onboarding clients and internal project management. And since this debacle, I've also decided now that invoices are her job. And so the setup is fairly straightforward. So let's head over to my computer and I'll show you how I did it. So first thing, the trigger is actually based on an updated invoice status in Notion. Now I do all of my accounting in Notion. I have for, I think probably two years, give or take now. And I do everything from tracking invoices, expenses, affiliate earnings, things like that. And frankly, I do it because I don't have a lot of overhead. I don't need extensive accounting software. I'm not doing bookkeeping in the sense that a lot of businesses are. And so this works for me. So keep that in mind. If you are a mid to larger size team, this may not work for you, but that doesn't mean that your triggers can't be from different places. So we have our trigger as our updated invoice, and then we have a filter specifically for the status in Notion. Now, understanding obviously there are several statuses, you'll see those in a second. This is triggered by my first reminder sent status. So the next piece of this is Formatter by Zapier. And this has frankly become one of my favorite Zapier tools to format currency, dates, times, automatically calculate time and date. And so what this does is it calculates 14 days of the payment reminder. So there is an initial due date and then there's a date that we send it. And why we need this is because technically the date in Notion doesn't format the way that Zapier would like it to play with Stripe. So just keep that in mind. So this automatically counts backwards 14 days, which you can see here, and then formats it to be a simple date. We don't need times. We don't need anything but month, date, and year. And then it formats the currency. Now, this is something that I didn't know, if I'm being completely honest with you. So obviously, in the Notion database portion, I have currency. I have a number property that is in USD, and you would think that that can easily translate to Stripe. However, it doesn't. And so what we have to do is use the formatter, again, the formatter tool, and format the invoice currency. Now, I actually had to go to ChatGPT to have them help me and my other robot, if you will, because when I first walk, did this walkthrough here, I kept getting only an invoice for $5 instead of $500. And what you actually have to do is you have to do what's called a perform math operation inside of the formatter tool. And you have to multiply it by 100, what the amount is, because I guess what is happening, and I verified this with Zapier Docs, is that Stripe looks at what we see as dollar amounts is actually cents. And so you have to translate cents into dollars, and how you do that is multiplying 100 pennies equals a dollar, etc. And so in our case, in our sample, 
like we have an amount of 500 and we are multiplying that. So technically the output is going to be 50,000 pennies, so to speak, but it's actually the $500 invoice. And then the next step is going to be formatting the due date. So again, same thing. We just want a simple date. We want it to read forward, not year, month, day, etc. Then we are going to find the customer in Stripe. So we're going to look them up based on the email we have in our Notion database. And then we're going to create that invoice. And so you'll basically just plug in the amount output and you can see here the due date. Um, and then I also include all of my invoices. I include just a really simple little message. So you can see here I have it plugged different properties. So it just says hi and then the person's name. Just a friendly reminder your invoice is due on the due date. Please let us know if you have any questions. So that's included and then this action automatically sends the invoice as well. So there are some things in here that you can change if you just want it to draft the invoice and not send it, but I just have it go all the way through. So that's Stripe. And then the last thing that this workflow does is it has Lizzie sending me a confirmation notice. So she basically just sends me a little ping in Slack that says, I've sent an invoice to the person's name due on this amount for 500. So that way I know that I can say, okay is it paid is it not do we need to send reminders things like that and stripe i have it in my account that it's automatically sending payment reminders and so if it goes unpaid zapier is handling that which is why you don't see or rather stripe is handling that that's why you don't see anything here for that workflow so let's just use myself here let's just pretend that i am my own client so we'll do this and you'll see that it pulls in from Rollup, it pulls in my name and my email. Now the next thing that I have is a send invoice formula. So what this does is it does a date subtract, 14 days, which creates the trigger, if you will, of when the invoice is going to get sent through or through Zapier. Okay, so how the automation in this database is set up. So I do have a native database automation set up in Notion that when this date, this calculated send invoice date is today, it automatically changes the pay status to first day or sorry, first reminder sent. And that is what the trigger in Zapier is. So if we just manually override this and we click first reminder sent. So if we go into my email, you will see that I now have a new invoice for $500 due on October 1st. So then if we go over to Slack, you can see that Lizzie has sent me a notification that just says, hi, Sarah, I've sent an invoice due on October 1 for 500. So that is the setup. It's very simple, very straightforward. And if you want to steal this for yourself, it is posted in my new workflows gallery on my website. So I will link it down below so you can follow the step-by-step -step process and know exactly what to set up in Zapier. And of course, just keep in mind as you set it up, you know, you may not have Slack or you may have different statuses in Notion or different trigger points. So use this as a guide, but I hope that it's helpful. And if you found it helpful, I would love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel so more people can find these amazing workflows for their own business. Oh, hey, did you know that it costs zero dollars to create efficiency in your business? Go to the description down below and download my free workbook to see how you can start working better.